continuing with the uh, January 2018 exam, uh, starting the constructed response with number 25, and this part is uh, the part twos, which are two points each. So that's going to go from 25 uh, to 31. Okay, so you're going to get seven part two questions, two points each. Now that definitely influences how much we put down for our proofs. All right, so it says prove triangle ABC is congruent to triangle CDA. For two points, it's going to be a relatively short proof. Maybe, you know, two to four steps is about all it would require. Um, so now there's really no uh, AC is going to be congruent to itself by reflexive property. That's going to be in there. Um, I would imagine anyway. And since it's a parallelogram, we're going to get a lot of other stuff going on here. Uh, you could just perform a side-side-side side proof, you know, opposite sides, parallelogram are, are congruent. Um, you know, there's so many ways to approach this one. So let's go ahead and, you know, maybe I, maybe I will do that. That is really the most efficient way, okay? So if I say those are the same because they're opposite sides of a parallelogram, these are the same for the same reason. Uh, it looks like an easy side 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 proof. All right, so first, what I would say probably is you could start with a given or just do this AC is congruent to itself by a reflexive property. Now that would get you at least something. Um, you know, if you break it down, that's half a point minimal. Um, with the markings and that, you're probably up to a point. Now, ABCD is a parallelogram because it's given. Now we got to make a move off of that. I'm going to say AD is congruent to. Uh, CB, and AB is, sorry, yeah, AB is congruent to CD because opposite sides of a parallelogram. Are, and I'll be careful here. They are parallel, but we got to realize what we did. We said congruent, so we got to use that theorem, not the parallel theorem. Okay, uh, now triangle ABC is congruent to triangle CDA by the side 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 triangle congruence theorem. So, constructing a square that's inscribed in a circle, uh, I'm going to explain it quick. Then I'm going to go over to Geometer Sketchpad because I can't really show you the right way on, on this uh, setup here. I don't have a way to do that, use my compass tool or anything. So what I would do first is, usually they don't give us a diameter, but they did here, so let's use it. Basically what we're looking at is we're going to use uh, the diagonals. of a square bisect each other are congruent and perpendicular. So if we can create that situation, okay, so if we can create a situation where a to a to b, we've got that center O. If we can create a perpendicular that is the same length as O to A, what we have is diagonals that bisect each other, they're perpendicular and they're congruent, and then this would form a square. Okay, now. All right. 
So that's what we're looking to do. Now the way to do that is going to be that you'd put the center of your compass tool on A. You're going to choose a radius. Now I'm going to try to sketch a circle here. That's not going to be great. Uh, choose a radius that's going to be relatively big. It doesn't have to go all the way to B, but it has to go past O by quite a bit. Okay, so let's say we're trying to center a circle there. I know that's not great, but now we're going to use the same radius and put our center at B, but same, same, same radius, okay? So you're going to go through like this, and what it's going to create, you don't even need this bottom one because you have a point O, but if you do it right, okay, and we connect those, that's awful, I get it, I get it, but you're going to run into a spot right here, okay, and right here. Now if we connect them all, we're going to have it. So let me click over to Geometry Sketchpad, and I'll actually do it the right way. Okay, here we are. So it kind of looks like this. Same situation as what we had before. Okay, this is A. That's B. And that's O. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to pick a radius that is more than halfway. I'm going to use this as my radius. And I'm going to put the center of my compass tool right there at A and construct that circle. Okay, so it looks like that. Okay, now I'm going to use the same radius over here at B. And notice kind of we have the same, kind of show you that there, but it's this is correct. Now, uh, these two points right here, if I did this correctly, should pass through the center. All right, now, I'm not interested in these two points. If I use these four points here, it's going to make a rhombus. You know, the diagonals will be perpendicular, but they won't be congruent. If I use this point and this point, then the diagonals will be congruent. So now all you're going to do is connect all those with your straight edge, uh, construct segments, display, and that's what it looks like. Okay, so that's what your construction should be. Twenty-seven. That's interesting. So what we're trying to do is uh, demonstrate that we know co-function values are equal when oops, their angle measures add to 90 degrees, okay? So for instance, sine of 70 degrees will be the same as cos of 20. That's the concept. Say sine of uh, 15 degrees is equal cos of 75 degrees. So the co-function values are. Now, um, how can they guarantee that two angles add to 90? Well, they can show Right triangle ABC, well, this means A and B, the measures of A and the measure of B, adds to 90. Okay, so explain why. All right, so here's what's going to happen here. What I would say is, since angle C is a right angle, the measures... Of angle A and angle B add to 90 degrees. Okay. Sine of A equals cos of B because uh, when Angle measures add to 90. The, 
cofunction values are equal. If sine A increases, cos B must increase to stay equal to it. That's it. So the answer is e increase, and that's the best I can do to explain why. Okay, number 28. Uh, let's see, circle has a radius of 25, area of the shaded, wait a minute, the unshaded sector is 500 pi, right, angle Q, the central angle of the shaded. All right, so what I'll probably do here is figure out what the full area of the full circle would be, then figure out the area of the shaded region, if we know the unshaded, it's 500 pi. All right, so here goes. So the area of the full circle is pi r squared. That's 625 pi. The reason I'm leaving it in terms of pi is because that is in terms of pi. Okay, so the shaded area is 625 pi, the full thing, minus 500 pi, which is the unshaded. The shaded, shaded area has an area of 125 pi. Okay. Okay, so 125 pi is what fraction of 625 pi. That's one way, this is one way to do it. Get rid of the pies. All right. So what fraction of the full circle is that? Okay, when we reduce this, this is one-fifth, so think about it, okay? One-fifth of a full circle is one-fifth of 360, and I get 72 degrees. Oops. And that's the uh, central angle of the shaded region. Now, there's a number of ways you could have done this. Uh, this is just the way that I chose. So, yeah, 72 degrees. All right, number 29. Grams, cubic centimeter, kilogram. We got some units of measure to worry about. Cost, okay. So we want the cost of this. This is going to be, it's only a two-point question. All right. So that's something to consider. There shouldn't be a terrible amount of work in this. So I guess it is just, okay, so they do give us the volume. That's good. So here's what we'll do. We'll take the volume that's already in cubic centimeters, right? And what we're going to do is we're going to figure out how many grams that is. That's what I would do. Now, again, I use proportions because uh, it fits this course a lot. Now, there's definitely dimensional analysis that you could learn in science class. A lot of different ways, but this is how I'm going to show it. So I have cub cubic centimeters. I want to know how many grams it is so that then I can convert that to kilograms and then, of course, a cost. So it's several conversions. Uh, now, what we have is... Um, it's 7.95 grams for every one cubic centimeter. Probably some people would rather I flip that. Let's do that. So most people would read it as 7.95 grams for every one cubic centimeter. Okay. 
So I'll flip it for people so it makes more sense. Just doing this quick. Uh, it looks like when we cross multiply, we get x equals these two multiplied together. We get 8069.25, and it's grams. Okay. Now I should convert that to kilograms. Um, what you should know is one kilogram is 1,000 grams. Now some of you know to just divide by 1,000. Okay. If you don't, again, we can kind of look at it like this. It's 8069.25 grams is what we have. We're looking for how many, we'll call it Y this time, kilograms. And it's 1,000 grams to every one uh, kilogram. So that's how you could do it. So basically all this is used for is to tell you that it has to be division. Divide by 1,000. I was taught to just move the decimal place, but that's how many kilograms. Still not done. Now, we need a 29 cents per kilogram. We'll call it C for cost. And... get two dollars two point three four so two dollars thirty four cents each now we want to make five hundred of them so five hundred times the two dollars and thirty four cents and I didn't round so that should be eleven seventy point oh four without rounding at any step, okay? Um, if you rounded here, it'd probably be just 1170 without the extra 0.04. Oh, nearest dollar, I'm wrong. Nearest dollar, so let's definitely go to 1170, and there it is. All right, that's it for number 29. All right, 30 and 31. Uh, this one's going to take a little while, so I'm going to come back on the next video to get, uh, you know, to get the rest of the part two. So